Hello, my name is Anthony and in this video we are going to interface the Nordic Semi NRF5340 with the NRF24L01 Plus. So this chip, um, I'm not too sure whether they sell it anymore, it's a legacy chip. But this is the new uh, processor by Nordic Semi. But the good part is that it's compatible with the old, old NRF24L01 Plus, which is their proprietary shock burst um, 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless protocol. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Arduino, we're going to send messages through UART that would send the messages wirelessly and we'll see if we can receive this message through um, on the NRF20, NRF53-5340. All right. The protocol that we have to use, uh, mind you, the NRF5340 has um, a lot of capabilities in terms of you know, Bluetooth low energy, uh, it's got a mesh network, Zigbee, it's got, you can use NFC. Then one of them is the 2.4 gigahertz proprietary uh, protocol by Nordic Semi, and that's called the Enhanced Shock Burst User Guide, or the Enhanced Shock Burst, or the ESB as they call it. And in here, if you want to get started with designing and writing code for it, uh, you could use the NRF SDK to get started. So what we do is um, we can go to Open Sager Embedded Studio, which I've already opened over here. And you would want to navigate to the ESB file. So when I open the SDK, which I'm going to show you right now, uh, let me open the SDK. So when you download the SDK, the latest version that I have is 1.7.0. You can go to NRF under this folder. Under NRF, you can go to samples. Under samples, there'll be ESB, which is the enhanced shock burst. And in here, you can utilize either the PTX or PRX, whether you want the enhanced shock burst to be a receiver or a transmitter. So in this case, we are using the PRX code over here. Now what I've done is I have uh, imported this code into Sager, Sager Embedded Studio and uh, I have also enabled logging so that we could print all these uh, log errors over here. So I've not made any changes to this folder, no sorry to this file which is pretty much designed by or developed by Nordic Semi. I didn't even have to change the address. So I'm going to show you what the transmitter is doing. So we'll open the code that the NRF24 L01 plus, what does, what does that look like? So what we have over here is we're setting the address to 0 E7 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 E7, and that's the receiving address. Now there is something called as the prefix, so if you look at the data sheet in here, uh, when we scroll down, it talks about how the address is formed. Yeah, so it says that the most significant byte of the 2.2 to 4 byte long base address is the first transmitted address byte, while the prefix byte is transmitted last. So that's the reason why we have four bytes over here, and then this is the prefix byte. So we don't need to change this address. Whereas in the transmitter side, we are basically transmitting all five bytes. So this is the old way of communication. It doesn't have a prefix. We just put everything in one address. Uh, into a byte. All right. Now, if you want to enable communicating with this too, uh, the NRF twenty four zero one plus plus and the NRF uh, five three four zero, there are a few things that you want to enable. Now, this is based on the Arduino code. So, you open the pipe. You need to enable auto acknowledge. You also need to recommend. You also need to enable dynamic payload. So acknowledge is basically saying that as soon as a packet is sent, it will automatically you you, are, you expect the um, you expect the NRF twenty four zero one to receive a acknowledge payload and uh, and know that it's uh, waiting for an acknowledge payload. So when you're tra so when it's, so the transmitter or the receiver must be enabled was must be programmed in such a way that it is going to send an acknowledge payload. Enable dynamic payload is where you can, once the receiver or once the transmitter sends messages, it can it has the capability of receiving a payload in in, in, the, in, in the ACK message. 
So you send an information and it's able to receive information as the act message. So that's what we, that's what we mean by dynamic payload. Retries is the number of times you can retry sending a packet in case of the transmitter, or in case the receiver is not receiving any signals, it'll try to transmit it five times before it stops. You also need to set the CRC length, which is here in this case is 16. These settings are very important to be enabled in order for the 5340 to work. Uh, the 2.4 gigahertz will to work on the 5340s. And then this is begin serial port so that we can send messages to the serial port. So this is the initialization on the NRF2401 plus side. And this is what's happening in by the default NRF5340 code, where you have the ESB protocol enabled, the bitrate is 2 Mbps, the mode is PRX, which is basically saying power received. You have some in, in event handler, and then you're also saying selective auto acknowledge, which is true. So that's about it. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do over here is I am going to so what I have here is I'm just going to clear my terminal, clear active terminal. I'm also going to bring in my NRF2400 UART port. So this is what this so this is the UART port connected to the NRF to the Arduino, which is connected to the NRF2400 Plus, and this JLink RTT viewer is connected to the NRF5340. So now what we're trying to do is communicate between this one radio channel and the other radio channel. So what I'm going to do is I am going to clear up everything and I'm just going to start from scratch. Uh, in the sense, I'm going to open the port. And these are the signals I can send. This is based on the motor example that I was talking about. But in this case, I'm not basically going to decipher the messages out here. We're just going to demonstrate the ability to transfer one packet to the other. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to disconnect the NRF5340 and enable it. And you'll see that there are certain messages that would come up. So we'll enable everything. So what I'm going to do is I could have just disconnected or reconnected. So what I'm going to do is disconnect. Then I'm going to connect. And as soon as I connect, it's basically going to say, hey, Henan Shockburst PRX sample. This is the clocks. We're initializing complete and now we're waiting for packets to be received. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are just gonna start sending. So in this particular case, I am gonna send a message of say 2F. Now mind you, this will also print out what the message is, or what 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 payload this, the NRF24L01 plus is sent, it will try to, it will try, to um, try to receive it. Uh, and the NRF24L01 plus is only gonna send two protocols or two messages in the buffer, though it can send, I think, 16 messages in a, in a buffer, but only two will be sent. So if I put in like, say for example, 0x10, and then I send in say 0x23, for example, and I click send, you can see over here that this is now sent 0x10, 0x23 received by the NRF5340. This is pretty cool. I mean, it's a uh, great to get this started. Now, because the NRF5340 has got a processor and it can do all the other cool stuff like you know pulse width modulation, ADC, and all the cool stuff, you can put this onto a remote control car uh, without having any other device and except for a motor driver and make get this working. Whereas previously, if I had to like say put this on a remote control car, I had to like have a microcontroller connected to the NRF2401 plus and a motor driver so it can get a little bit too bulky but once but when but this chip can handle everything it's quite integrated into one small little chip over here so it makes uh, applications you can create cool applications with minimal components and that's a uh, that's a pretty cool feature about this so yeah and that's about this for this video we have got we're able to communicate we're able to make the nrf 2401 plus communicate with the nrf5340 and it's uh, it's such a you don't sometimes you might want to use Bluetooth for more fancy communication stuff, but when you just want to you know play around you know get a quadcopter running or a RC control car running, this is a, a very simple protocol to get working, and uh, and there are a lot of cool applications you can build from this. All right, and thank you.